Praise the Lord, saints. Once again, I would like to welcome you to another episode of Do the Right Thing. As founder and pastor Shirley Wharton, I'm your host, Pastor Rodney Stevens. Feel free to tune in every Sunday morning from 8 to 8.30 on Comcast TV 20. We can also be viewed on social media through bgntv.gospel.com 24 hours a day, sponsored by Bell Global Network. Amen. Uh, let's just start off with a, a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. We praise you. We ask that you forgive us of every sin that we've committed, known and unknown. Father, according to your word in Acts 10 and 38, you anointed your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Thus he went about doing good and healing all those that were oppressed by the devil. For this reason, our Lord and Savior came into the world. Father, we ask for this reason he came into the world, that he may destroy the works of the devil. Father, we ask for that same Holy Ghost, field anointing, that it would rest upon us today, not for recognition, but that the people may be delivered. And we'll give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, saints. That's what I want to say. It's good to be back here uh, to share with you again. I trust that God has been good to you because he's been good to me because he is no respect of person. I wanted to share something with you. Um, didn't feel like coming out today. Wanted to stay at home and wanted to stay in bed. But how many people know we can't go by how we feel? Can't go by how we feel. Uh, the Lord led me on a fast uh, a couple of weeks ago. I went on a fast and one of those old school fasts and I'm sharing this story with you for a reason. This is not um, not to um, promote myself or anything of that nature, but I um, want to share this with you. Uh, the Lord led me on a fast. I went on one of those old fasts where, where uh, we went three days with no food. Um, the only thing we had was uh, water and uh, maybe some mints, one of those type fasts. So when we went on our fast, uh, went on there, I know the Lord let me on there. And then again, I know, not, I, I know we don't go by feeling or how we feel, but when I came off, when the fast was over, I don't know, I was just really looking for something, <laughs> some type of cause or effect. Again, we don't go by feeling, but I was still looking for something, a divine revelation, a word, a, a, a shining arm, a boost, uh, uh, should have, I thought maybe I should have felt like I was ready to, uh, should I felt like I should have just gone to another level or anything. But when I came off the fast, I just simply felt the same way I did before I started fasting. And preacher, why do you bring that up? I said that to say this. I had been praying to the Lord. Lord, I simply want to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. I want to live saved because... Uh, it's the right thing to do. I want it to be a part of me. I want it to be in my DNA. I want it to be just a, a, a part of me. I want it to be said that that's who I am. I want to be the same person at home, in church, in the marketplace, on the streets, in front of friends, uh, on the job, wherever. I simply want to, I, I want to be, I, I want to operate in integrity. And in order for that to happen, it just have to be who I am. And that was my prayer to God. So when the fast was over, I was looking for something great to happen. And when it didn't happen, I began to question. I began to ask the Lord in so many words. I said, well, Lord, I really don't feel anything different. And the Lord just, just uh, led me back to my prayer. He said, you, you, you prayed the prayer that you simply just want to do the, uh, the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Well, anyway, I say all that to say this. I say all that to say this right here. If God does nothing else for us, which we know he will, but if he does nothing else for us, have we gotten to a point, have we gotten to a place and I walk with God where I'm going to do the right thing because uh, it's the right thing to do? Have we gotten to a place to where we are going to walk up right before God and do his will simply because it's in me to do it? Or um, or uh, does he? Or are we still being strung along by if I do this, God will do that? Is it always? Does it always have to be a cause and effect in our response when it comes to God? 
How about the fact that uh, how about the fact that he saved you and woke you up and blessed you and snatched you out of the jaws of hell? The Bible says that he 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 he, he, he brought us up and out of the miry clay. Just the fact that God has done what he's done up to this point, and I have a, a mind to want to praise him, not to mention that I'm no longer bound, but I'm free to serve God. There was a time when I had an addiction, and I did what that addiction wanted me to do. And, and, and mind you, addiction is not all just limited to drugs. It's not just limited to alcohol. Addiction is anything that you could not control that was bringing destruction in your life. So I thank God that I'm just simply free. And my prayer was, God, I want to be free and I want to serve you. I can't pay you back. I can't pay you back. But I can. But my life can be a sacrifice unto you. So I say all that to say this. I thank God for answering my prayer because I'm learning and you should be learning the same thing. It's just in me to do the right thing. Let me give you an example. When you're driving in your car, when you're driving in your car, and, and, and a lot of us have been driving for a while, it's just in you now when you get to the stop sign and if the light is red, it's just in you to stop. Whether you see the police or not, it's just in you to stop. Of course, during rush hour, because well, if I run that light, I'm going to hit another car. Yeah, well, what about those times when it's not rush hour? It's just maybe you or a few cars on the street, you get to that four-way stop sign or you get to that red light, it's just in you to stop. It's just in you to do the right thing. When it's in you to do the right thing, when the trials of life come, although the, the trials will be difficult, but when it's a part of you to do the right thing, you will not ease. You, you, you will not be easily moved. And that's where we're going here today. When it's a part of your DNA, when I love God just because of who he is, when I love God and just thank Him for what He's already done for me, and it's just a, and it's just a part of who I am. No matter what comes up, no matter what goes on now, I'm simply not going to be moved because I know uh, who I belong to. And then now, not to mention that he'll be there with me in every storm. He'll be there with me in every trial. He'll be there with me in every test. The Bible says that many are the afflicted of the righteous, but God will deliver them from them all. But is it in you to want to serve God in spite of? Amen? Amen. It, it's, I mean, is it in you? So once again, I couldn't go by feeling I was laying in the bed this morning, and uh, I, my uh, first thing was to uh, call Mr. Bell and tell Mr. Bell, go ahead and run the tape. But the Lord began to speak to me as I was lying there, and the Lord began to speak to me. There's somebody that need to hear this message this morning. And um, so the Lord got me up out of the bed and said, no, I need you to go down there, um, and I need you to deliver this message. Somebody out there needs to hear this message. There was a song that we used to sing years ago. The churches used to sing years ago. I'm not going to sing it because I'm not a, a singer, but I'm going to read it out to you. It says, you've been waiting on a blessing, and it seems it just won't come. Body sick, pain everywhere, and it seems as though no one cares. But I want to tell you that the devil is a liar, and he's a deceiver too. God is not through blessing you. Let me say that again. God is not through blessing you. You've got to believe it. In fact, why don't you confess that with me? Let it be your confession this morning. Don't just spectate, but let it be your confession. I want you to repeat after me. Say, God is not through blessing me. I know how it looks. You've been waiting on this blessing for a long time. People have been saying, just hang on in there. You've been hanging in there. You've been trusting God. And you've been wondering, God, when, when, when? And you don't know what God is doing behind the scenes. So the devil being the opportunist that he is, he's going to come and talk to you and try to have you. And he wants you to think and believe that God is not with you. He wants you to think and believe that God has forsaken you. He wants you to think and believe that God is not there. He would have you think that God brought you all this way for nothing. But you've got to know 
in your heart that God is not through blessing you. There's times when I have to encourage myself that God is not through blessing me. Adversities can be distressful or it can be a blessing. The way you view adversities is strictly your choice. You've heard, you have often heard me say that adversities is not always bad. There's a reason for it. God uses adversities in most points, in most cases, to get us from one point to another. Let me say that again. God uses, he employs in his sovereignty. He uses adversities in most cases to get us from one point to another. Job says this in 36 and, uh, Job 36 and 15. It says, he delivers the poor in, not out of, he delivers the poor in his affliction and open their eyes in oppression. God delivers God delivers the poor. He delivers us in our affliction. What do you mean by that? He takes the very thing that we're going through, the very thing that we're stumbling over, the very thing that's holding us back. God wants to use that very thing to bring about our deliverance. In other words, he wants to take those stumbling blocks, those things that are hindering us, and he wants to turn them into stepping stones. But you've got to be able to see this. See, you're looking at it as a hindrance. You're looking at it as a stone. You're looking at it as a blockage. But uh, if you open up your spiritual eyes and, 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 and look at it in a different way, I see them as steps. Some people see the cup half empty. I see the cup half full. If you see it half empty, then you begin to worry and panic. But when you see it as a wait, half full, that means that there's room for more increase. That means that uh, from here, I'm just going up. I'm going to feel. So it's your perception of things. God does not want us to faint in the day of adversities. He don't want you to fall apart in the day of adversity. But in the times, in the days of adversity, God wants us to be strong. And, 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 and he wants us to know that he is with us. In fact, we are to rejoice. Not rejoice because we're going through, but rejoice because we know that God is getting ready to do something on our behalf. No, I'm, I'm excited because I know, one, I'm doing the right thing. Why else would the devil be fighting you the way that he's fighting you? Why else would he seem like he's throwing everything at you and just to be throwing everything at you? Because there's something that you're doing that uh, pleases God and you're on the right path. Then get this. There's some things in you. There's some things in your life that God wants to straighten out and control. But we've been kicking the thing down the road. There's a problem that I was faced with. And I was going through some things, and then, and then some things, let's just be honest, some things, uh, even as a Christian, even as a pastor, there's some things in my life that I still need to work on. I'm talking natural now. I'm not even talking spiritual, I'm just talking natural. Some things that I need to get together, some issues I need to work on, and, and sometimes dealing with that thing is like dealing with a thousand pound gorilla. A lot of times I don't want to deal with that. So I, and a lot of times I find myself, even my own self, kicking the can down the road. I'll deal with it later. And the thing when I kick it down the road, God kicks it back at me. No, you're going to deal with this because if I take you to the next level, a lot of this stuff here has to be resolved. There's simply some things in your life that needs to be resolved. So while you're kicking and bucking and binding the devil, it's, it's, it's God that's bringing a lot of this stuff to the forefront saying, no, we need to get this resolved because where I'm taking you, we can't have these things coming up. We simply can't have them coming up. So God will deliver you in your affliction by what? Bringing things to you. And he'll, he'll uh, point things out in your life. I need you working on this. I need you working on that. I need you to work on this. And like I've shared with the congregation, God says this. And this is our uh, approach to things. God spoke to me and said this. He said, Stevens, I need you to work on the natural. I need you to work on the natural things. A lot of times we want to do the supernatural. A lot of times, send me God, I'll go. A lot of times, I mean, if God could tell us to climb Mount Everest, we'll try to climb Mount Everest. But how about if I could get you to just concentrate and work out your own soul salvation, not only spiritually, but naturally. How about working on our credit? 
So you want a new house, work on your credit. So you want a new car, work on your credit. How about working on some natural things down here? You say you want better health, how about changing your diet? If you do the natural and do your part, God says that I will do the supernatural. In other words, once you... Once you make an effort, once you start doing, once you start working on it, then I'll step in and I'll be the difference maker. And a lot of times you're going to find that as you start working on some of these hard, cumbersome things in our life, that when you start working on them, when you get there, you're going to find out that God has already gone before you to make a way. Let's get into our lesson here. The book of uh, we're in the book of uh, Exodus 14 and 12. It says this. It says, and Moses said to the people, he said, "Be not afraid." That's the first thing. We cannot be afraid. Fear has got to be. Fear has got to uh, be eliminated from the equation. He says, "Be not afraid." He says, "Stand still." Look at that word there, stand still. In other words, calm yourself. A lot of times when we go through problems and things hit us, the first thing that happens is our emotions is all over the place. Oh my God, we were, and, 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 and then in our mind, we then uh, ran through the whole scenario. It's going to turn out like this, this is that, that's not going to happen, this is going to happen, this, this, that. And our mind, we've been, in, been in played the whole scenario out. But how many of you know by now that in most cases, uh, you didn't already see it how it was going to turn out because of fear and your emotions, and it never even turned out. It wasn't even as bad as you thought it was. In fact, when you calmed down, and then you really took a look at it, or you talked to somebody, and it calmed you down, it was not as bad as it appeared to be. Which let me go back to what I said. The way our view of that, of our view of adversities, our view of things. If I'm viewing it in a bad way, then yes, it can become distressful. But if I'm looking at it through the eye lens of God, then Lord, what are you saying here? God, what are you saying here? Could it be that this thing that God wanted me to deal with last year, I should have I should have dealt with it last year, and because I did, now God is bringing it back around again, so that it, it can be dealt with, so that I can move on. You never know what God is doing behind the scenes. So say He says, "Stand still." Now, this "stand still" is here, here again. It, it means to calm. Let, let's just calm down, and then and, and and then let's calm my nerves. Let's, 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 let's be rational, let's think about, let's praise God, let's get into prayer, and let's stop giving uh, more energy and power to the negative source and start giving more energy and our power to God. God, what are you saying? Be still, calm your nerves, still your spirit. And then he says, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you've seen today, you shall never see again anymore. There are some Egyptians in our lives, some things that have been holding us bondage for years. For years. And um, for uh, years. And that's why in most cases, easier said than done. Yeah, when that thing come up, yeah, it rattles your cage. Been dealing with this thing for years. Been walking with the Lord, but dealing with this particular thing for so many years. So it rattles my cages, but now God is saying, hey, I'm getting ready to deliver. I've shared with you some years ago, I decided what I called was to go for broke. I decided, I said, that's it. I drew a line in the sand and I told the devil, I said, hitherto shall you come no further. I'm going to trust God for my deliverance. And I was saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, had a man to go on to see what the end was going to be. I loved it, God, but there was something about this Egyptian that every time this particular thing came around, I would, I would find myself dummying down. I'd find myself giving up and giving in. But I got tired of giving up and giving in because if the power of God is not on the inside of me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, then why is it that every time this particular thing come around, I dummy down to it? So, so then I bought into the fact that greater is in me than he that is in the world. I bought into the fact that when the Bible said that uh, Jesus came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. I bought into the fact that I had the power to become the son of God and to maintain. I bought into the fact that whom the son set free 
is free indeed. And when I started looking at it from that level, I said, you know what? No more falling apart. No more backing up. But I'm going to stand still right here and I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord. I don't know why this thing keeps coming up, but God knows why he keeps coming up. Then he says here in verse 13, which is important, it says here, it says, Then Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Okay? Uh, he says, Take your stand. It means to be firm and confident. Take a stand. Be firm and confident, not in self. Be firm and confident, not in New Year's resolution. New Year's resolution, this year coming around, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But how many of us know by the time Easter get there, it's, a, it's, a, it's all ancient history. But stand firm and be confident in this. And don't be dismayed, but be confident in this that God is going to move on my behalf and I'm going to see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to stand firm and confident in the fact that God's going to move on my behalf and I'm going to see his salvation. That's my part. That's the part that God wants me to do. That's the part that God wants you to do. He wants you to stand and to be firm, continue living saved, continue moving forward, continue doing the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do and be firm in it and confident and don't be shaken and don't be moved because God wants to show you his salvation. Then verse 15, even this is the most important part. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Why cry thou unto me? Tell the children of Israel to move forward. Now here's the other thing. We've got to follow the instructions of the Lord. If you just stand there and do nothing, you're going to be defeated. If you just stand there, and a lot of times this is what we do, we'll trust it, we'll, we'll stand there, we'll trust God, but we won't follow instructions, we won't do anything. The Bible says faith without works is dead. We won't. We have the faith, but where's the works? The works come in that now I've got to do what God has told me to do. What has God been telling you to do in this particular situation? What steps have you been trying to order? And that you, that you may start out taking one step, but it seemed like the, the one step you take was difficult. The two steps you take was difficult. The, the, the third and the fourth steps didn't seem like it was really working out anything. And because you didn't see any results, then you begin to retreat or back away from it. But you got to do what God have called you to do. So then we've got to follow his instructions. Got to follow his instructions. So then what was his instructions? He told Moses, tell the people to go forward. Now, let's get to why all of this happened. Let's get to why where you are where you are today. Before you blame God, before you get angry with God, let's see what God is doing behind the scene. God simply wanted to get the victory over the Egyptians. He wasn't just concerned about bringing the children of Israel out. But then he wanted to destroy that enemy that kept them in bondage for so many years. God not only wants you to deliver you and bring you out of that situation, but he also wants to dis destroy that bondage, destroy that affliction, destroy that addiction that has been weighing on you and has been hindering you from doing all that God has called you to do. He wants to destroy that thing. Anything that is destroyed cannot be put back together again. So then God is bringing you to a point, but you're going to have to, first of all, you got to stand still. You got to calm yourself. You got to have confidence. You can't be moved. You can't be wavered. You got to know the God that you serve. The Bible says to, um, when it comes to faith, without faith it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks him. That's your part. God's, and then second part is this. Now you have an assignment. You've got to do what God has told you to do. Because now he's strategically ordering your steps. Like he's, just like he did with Moses. He says, stretch forth the hand. Tell the people to go forward. He is strategically ordering your steps. Walk by faith. Walk by move forward. I don't care if it's a red sea in front of you, symbolically speaking, and your problems behind you. Continue to move forward. Those are your marching orders. Then God, what did he do? He parted the Red Sea. The children of Israel make it through on the other side. The uh, the Egyptians, 
that had kept them in bondage for so many years, tried to pursue them, and in their pursuit, God did what? He destroyed. But it all started at the showdown at the Red Sea. And God woke me and God woke me and God got me out of bed this morning to tell you that what you're in is just a showdown. Don't panic. Don't get discouraged. Don't run in the wrong direction. God, what are you saying? What are my marching orders? Because God orchestrated this thing. He said, I'm the one that hardened Pharaoh's heart. I'm the one that allowed this problem to keep coming back. I'm the one that keep allowing this thing to keep servicing because you don't want to deal with it. You keep kicking the can down the road. I'm trying to get you to the next level, but in order to get you to the next level, I, you, you can't have this thing hanging over your head. And a lot of times, it's not even spiritual. A lot of times it can be natural. Hard to serve God when you got uh, when you debt pulling on you. Hard to serve God. That's it again. But it, but all of these little weights and problems and these things and health problems, health issues weighing on us when we're trying to serve God. And God is saying, that I'm bringing things to the front, to the surface, so that we can deal with it and get the victory over it and move on. And do what God have called us to do. Do what God have called you to do. So learn to thank God. Learn to thank God. Learn to thank God. I, I thank God now for I thank God for adversities. No, I'm not happy about it. No, it hurts. Don't get me wrong. It hurts. But before I walk away from God, I pray, okay, Lord, what's going on? What's going on? What is it that you're trying to do? I know this, Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. The thoughts that prosper you and bring you to an expected end. Don't give up. Praise God and thank him for what he's doing in your life. Learn how to see things different. No, God is not against you. He's working some things out in you. And painful as it may be, it's going to yield fruit. My prayer for you is that you say, yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. When I don't feel it, yes. When it don't feel good, yes. So there's my prayer that you get up from that situation. Praise God. Wipe your tears. Thank him. He loves you. I know the devil said he don't, but he loves you. It's okay to smile. It's okay to laugh. Let's laugh about it. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Laugh about it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And it is my prayer that you would uh, do what God has called you to do. And go from here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Till we meet again. Amen. This is your girl Vicky Wines and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Clifton Davis and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock, the Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. 
This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network.